Hello everyone. Today we'll honor and remember the incredible legacies of five American stars who died today. These individuals left an unforgettable mark on the hearts of fans and the entertainment industry. Please like and subscribe to the channel to pay tribute and keep their legacy alive for generations to come. Sherry Coben was not just a writer. She was a storyteller who shaped moments of joy and understanding in the lives of many. For those of us who grew up watching her work, she wasn't just a creator. We felt as if we knew her, like an old friend who always understood how to make us laugh, think, and connect. As we say goodbye to this beloved figure, we are reminded of the unique way she captured the struggles, triumphs, and humor of everyday life through her creative lens. Her passing on October 16, 2024, after a battle with cancer, leaves a void in the hearts of her fans, family, and those who knew her personally. Sherry Coben was born in September 1953, growing up in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Her love for storytelling led her to attend Swarthmore College and Cornell University, where she began laying the foundations for her future career in media. It's hard to imagine that someone who brought so much joy to television audiences started her career in the art department at KYW-TV in Philadelphia, working on graphics and sets. Yet, this humble beginning paved the way for Coben's later success as a writer and producer, and it was this early creative spirit that would eventually earn her an Emmy Award for her work on the children's show Hot Hero Sandwich. Coben's career is perhaps best known for her creation of the 1980s sitcom Kate and Alley, a show that captured the complexities of modern life and redefined what television could say about women, family, and friendship. The series, which starred Jane Curtin and Susan St. James as two divorced women raising their children together, ran for six seasons and won several Emmy Awards, earning a special place in the hearts of millions. Coben's ability to tell stories that resonated with women and with audiences at large was nothing short of groundbreaking. It's rare to find shows today that speak so honestly to the experiences of women. But Coben's work did just that, creating space for more female-driven stories in a male-dominated industry. Beyond her work on Kate and Alley, Coben wrote for Ryan's Hope and later created the web series Little Women, Big Cars, continuing to explore relationships and the many dimensions of women's lives. Through these projects, she influenced not only the genre, but also the way writers and producers approached storytelling on TV and online platforms. Her work is a testament to her creative mind, but her true legacy lies in how she touched the lives of her audience. What made Coben truly special, however, wasn't just her ability to tell stories. It was her passion for mentoring others. She believed in nurturing the next generation of writers and artists offering her guidance and wisdom to those hoping to follow in her footsteps. Many have spoken about the influence she had on their lives, not just in their careers, but in how she inspired them to think creatively and boldly. Family and friends, including her husband, Patrick McMahon, and daughters, Kaylee and Jama, have shared touching tributes, expressing their pride in the incredible legacy she leaves behind. The outpouring of love from fans and colleagues alike only highlights how deeply Coben's work resonated with everyone she touched. Social media has been filled with heartfelt messages from those who found comfort, laughter, and meaning in her creations. In remembering Sherry Coben, one story stands out, a testament to her character and spirit. She often spoke about the creative process behind Kate and Allie, reflecting on how the series was inspired by the many strong women she knew in her own life. She said that she wrote the show for the women who were balancing their roles as mothers, professionals, and friends, a reflection of herself, her peers, and the countless women who found themselves in similar shoes. Coben's passing marks the end of an era, but her legacy will continue to live on through the stories she told and the people she inspired. As we remember her life and work, we hold on to the lessons she taught us, that laughter, love, and creativity are the greatest gifts we can share with one another. Sherry Coben may be gone, but her influence will remain, shaping the way we tell stories and celebrate life for generations to come. That's $2,000, man, $2,000! Mr. Jennings gave it to me to give to you. 
Ron Howard, a name synonymous with both on-screen charm and behind-the-camera brilliance, has left an indelible mark on Hollywood. From his early days as a beloved child actor to becoming one of the most acclaimed directors in the industry, Howard's journey is one of creative evolution and mastery. Born on March 1, 1954 in Duncan, Oklahoma, Ron Howard grew up immersed in the world of film and television, thanks to his parents, both of whom were actors. His early exposure to the craft set the stage for what would become a remarkable career spanning over six decades. Howard's rise to fame began when he was cast as Opie Taylor on The Andy Griffith Show at just six years old. As the wholesome, endearing son of Sheriff Andy Taylor, Howard charmed audiences, solidifying his place in the hearts of viewers across America. His portrayal of Opie, full of innocence and warmth, became iconic, showcasing Howard's natural ability to captivate with his subtle yet effective performances. But this was just the beginning of his illustrious journey in Hollywood. In the 1970s, Howard took on another memorable role, this time as Richie Cunningham in Happy Days. Paired with Henry Winkler's Arthur Fonzie Fonzarelli, Howard's portrayal of the clean-cut, optimistic teenager anchored the show. The chemistry between Howard and Winkler turned Happy Days into a cultural phenomenon, propelling both actors into stardom. However, Howard's ambitions extended beyond acting. He had always been intrigued by the process of filmmaking, and it wasn't long before he made the transition from being in front of the camera to directing films. Howard's directorial debut came with Grand Theft Auto in 1977, but it was his 1982 film Night Shift that marked his first major success as a director. From there, Howard's career took off as he helmed some of the most beloved and critically acclaimed films of the 1980s and 1990s, including Splash, Cocoon, and Apollo 13. His ability to tell stories that resonated with both critics and audiences made him a trusted name in Hollywood. In 2001, Howard reached new heights with a beautiful mind, which earned him two Academy Awards for Best Director and Best Picture. His work on the film was praised for its emotional depth and sensitive portrayal of mathematician John Nash's struggle with schizophrenia. Despite his many successes, Howard's career was not without its challenges. Like many in Hollywood, he faced the pressure of keeping up with changing trends and maintaining relevance in an industry that is always evolving. Yet Howard's versatility as a director, combined with his keen storytelling instincts, allowed him to adapt. From directing blockbuster films like the Da Vinci Code series to working on more intimate, character-driven projects like Frost, Nixon, and Cinderella Man, Howard has shown an incredible range in his directorial work. One of Howard's greatest strengths is his ability to connect with audiences on a deeply human level. Whether he's telling the story of astronauts in peril, as in Apollo 13, or exploring the complexities of mental illness in a beautiful mind, Howard brings a level of emotional authenticity to his films that resonates with viewers. His commitment to storytelling is further evidenced by his foray into documentary filmmaking, with projects like The Beatles, Eight Days a Week, and Pavarotti, which showcase his dedication to bringing real-life stories to the screen with the same care and attention to detail as his fictional works. Beyond his technical skills, Howard's success is rooted in his collaborative spirit. He has consistently worked with some of the industry's top talent, from actors like Tom Hanks and Russell Crowe to producers and writers creating a legacy of films that are both critically and commercially successful. His longtime partnership with producer Brian Grazer through their production company Imagine Entertainment has led to a series of influential films and television shows that have shaped modern entertainment. Despite being one of Hollywood's most respected directors, Howard remains humble and grounded. His upbringing in a close-knit family, his early success as a child actor, and his subsequent transition into a powerhouse director have given him a unique perspective on fame and success. He has spoken about the importance of staying true to his roots and keeping family at the center of his life, even amidst the pressures of Hollywood. In 2024, Howard continues to push creative boundaries. His recent project, Eden, a dark psychological thriller set in the 1930s, marks a departure from his more feel-good films showing his willingness to explore new genres 
and take risks even this late in his career. The film, which premiered at the Toronto International Film Festival, showcases Howard's masterful direction, particularly in creating tension and atmosphere. With an all-star cast, including Jude Law and Ana de Armas, Eden has already generated buzz for its intense performances and immersive storytelling. Ron Howard's influence on the film industry is immeasurable. From his early days as a child actor to becoming a multi-award winning director, Howard has proven time and again that he is a master storyteller. His ability to evolve, take on new challenges, and remain relevant in an ever-changing industry is a testament to his talent and dedication. As he continues to create, Howard's work will undoubtedly inspire future generations of filmmakers, leaving a lasting legacy that goes far beyond the films he has directed. His story is one of passion, resilience, and an unwavering commitment to his craft, making him one of Hollywood's most enduring and beloved figures. Lillian Schwartz's life and career are a testament to the relentless pursuit of innovation, creativity, and the intersection of art and technology. As one of the pioneers of computer-generated art, Schwartz carved a path that not only revolutionized the way we understand digital media, but also left an indelible mark on the world of visual arts. Her passing on October 12, 2024, at the age of 97, reminds us of the profound legacy she leaves behind, a legacy that continues to inspire generations of artists and technologists alike. Born on July 13, 1927, in Cincinnati, Ohio, Schwartz's early life was shaped by the Great Depression and the hardships of being the youngest of 13 children in a Jewish immigrant family. These early experiences instilled in her a resilience that would later define both her personal and professional journey. While she initially pursued nursing, studying anatomy and biology, her true calling emerged as she began experimenting with various artistic mediums. It was during her time in post-war Japan, after contracting polio, that she studied calligraphy under the artist Chiro, planting the seeds for her future exploration of digital art. Schwartz's work with computers began in the 1960s, a time when few artists were engaging with this new and largely unexplored medium. She quickly became a visionary in computer-generated art, transforming abstract concepts into visual masterpieces. Her affiliation with Bell Labs, where she collaborated with engineers like Ken Knowlton, was pivotal in pushing the boundaries of what art could achieve through technology. Her early works, like Pixelation, 1970, and UFOs, 1971, were groundbreaking, combining computer-generated imagery with hand animation in ways that had never been seen before. Schwartz's ability to merge science and art led to some of her most notable contributions, particularly her work with Leonardo da Vinci's masterpieces. Her project, Mona slash Leo, where she used computational analysis to explore the similarities between da Vinci's self-portrait and the Mona Lisa, challenged traditional perspectives and opened new dialogues about art history and interpretation. While her theories sparked debate, they exemplified her pioneering spirit. Schwartz was always pushing the boundaries of what art could be, using technology not just as a tool, but as a medium to explore deeper truths. Her influence extended beyond the art world as she collaborated with scientific institutions like IBM, Lucent Technologies, and Exxon Research Center, contributing to research on color perception and sound. Schwartz's work wasn't limited to galleries and exhibitions. Her influence reached the mainstream, with her computer-generated public service announcement for the Museum of Modern Art winning an Emmy Award in 1984. The impact of Lillian Schwartz's career can be seen in the evolution of digital art today. Her work laid the foundation for the digital tools and software now widely used by artists, from Photoshop to Final Cut Pro decades before they became industry standards. Her films and artworks exhibited at prestigious institutions like the Museum of Modern Art, the Whitney Museum of American Art, and the Centre Pompidou serve as a lasting reminder of her visionary contributions. As the news of her passing spread, tributes poured in from artists, technologists, and admirers across the globe. 
Her trailblazing work not only reshaped the artistic landscape, but also inspired countless individuals to explore the creative potential of technology. Lillian Schwartz was more than just an artist. She was a visionary who saw the possibilities of a future where art and technology are intertwined. One particularly moving story that encapsulates Schwartz's perseverance is how, during her recovery from polio in Japan, she learned to paint in her mind before transferring it to paper, a practice that later mirrored her approach to computer art. Creating in her head before the technology existed to bring her visions to life was symbolic of her entire career. She was always ahead of her time, anticipating where technology would take art long before the tools existed. In remembering Lillian Schwartz, we celebrate not only her artistic achievements, but also her unyielding spirit and the legacy she leaves behind. Her work continues to inspire, reminding us that creativity knows no bounds and that innovation, when pursued with passion and purpose, can change the world. The digital art movement she helped pioneer will carry her influence for generations to come, ensuring that her contributions to art and technology will never be forgotten. Uh, if I say anything wrong, uh, then I will not be buying lunch uh, for lots of people. The world recently bid farewell to a political titan whose influence reached far beyond the borders of Scotland. Alex Salmond, a name synonymous with Scottish nationalism and the quest for independence, passed away on October 12, 2024, at the age of 69. His sudden departure has left an indelible mark on Scotland's political landscape and the hearts of those who followed his long, storied career. Salmond's passing was unexpected, occurring during a cultural diplomacy forum in North Macedonia, a place where he continued to advocate for his lifelong passions of diplomacy and independence. Born on December 31, 1954, Salmon's career was one of determination and resilience. He dedicated much of his life to the pursuit of Scottish independence and his leadership of the Scottish National Party, SNP, not only transformed the party, but brought Scotland closer than ever to achieving that dream. His tireless work culminated in the 2014 Scottish independence referendum, a historic event that fell short of his aspirations, but showcased his relentless drive to see Scotland as a sovereign nation. Despite the referendum's outcome, Salmon's work left an everlasting legacy, one that continued to influence the nation's political discourse long after he stepped down as first minister. Alex Salmon's cause of death was a heart attack, a tragic event that unfolded while he was helping a colleague at the forum. His final moments were filled with the same warmth and helpfulness he had often shown throughout his life. It was a departure as sudden as it was shocking, bringing to an abrupt end the life of a man whose career spanned decades and whose contributions were felt across Scottish, UK, and international politics. Salmon's career saw its pinnacle during his tenure as First Minister of Scotland from 2007 to 2014. Under his leadership, the SNP rose from the fringes of Scottish politics to a dominant force. His political acumen and strategic brilliance helped the party achieve a landmark victory in 2011, paving the way for the independence referendum three years later. Although the Yes campaign was ultimately defeated, Salmon's legacy as the architect of the modern independence movement remains undeniable. His charm, intelligence, and fierce dedication won him admirers not only within Scotland but across the UK and beyond. Beyond politics, Alex Salmon was a man deeply connected to the people. His compassion for the Scottish cause went hand in hand with his empathy for the citizens he represented. Those who knew him well often spoke of his ability to connect with ordinary Scots, listening to their concerns and fighting for their rights. His personal touch and genuine love for his country were qualities that endeared him to both his supporters and critics alike. Among the many stories that capture Alex Salmon's character, one particularly stands out. It was reported that, during the final moments of his life, Salmon was helping a colleague open a ketchup bottle at the Forum. It's a simple act, yet it speaks volumes about the man, always willing to help, always ready to lend a hand. His warmth and generosity, even in such a small gesture, reflect the kindness that many of his colleagues and friends remember fondly. 
As Scotland reflects on the life and legacy of Alex Salmond, it's clear that his contributions to the nation will not be forgotten. He was a leader, a visionary, and a man of the people. His fight for Scottish independence may not have culminated in the result he so deeply desired, but his efforts brought the cause closer than ever before. Salmond's impact on Scottish politics and culture is undeniable, and his legacy will continue to inspire future generations of Scots who share his dream of a free and independent Scotland. In the end, Alex Salmond's story is one of resilience, conviction, and an unwavering commitment to his beliefs. His legacy is one that transcends political victory or defeat. It lies in the hearts of the people he inspired, the movement he championed, and the country he loved so dearly. Though he is gone, his dream lives on, and Scotland will forever remember the man who brought it so close to reality. Wesley Snipes, born on July 31, 1962, is a renowned American actor and martial artist whose career has spanned decades, known for his iconic roles in action films. From his early rise in movies like Major League and New Jack City to becoming a cult favorite as the vampire-slaying hero in the Blade series, Snipes has left an indelible mark on Hollywood. He has also trained in martial arts since the age of 12, earning multiple black belts, which contributed to his distinct action-heavy film style. Snipes' journey to stardom began with standout performances in movies such as Spike Lee's Mo Better Blues and Jungle Fever. However, it was his role in Blade that catapulted him into the mainstream. The 1998 film became a massive success, grossing over $150 million and leading to two sequels. His portrayal of Blade helped pave the way for modern superhero films and remains a fan favorite to this day. His ability to blend martial arts with acting, portraying both heroes and villains, established him as a versatile action star. But Wesley Snipes' life has not been without controversy. In the 2000s, Snipes faced significant legal troubles, including a conviction for willfully failing to file federal tax returns, resulting in a three-year prison sentence. His legal battles created a public stir, overshadowing his career for a time. Despite these setbacks, Snipes made a comeback with roles in films like The Expendables 3 and Netflix's True Story, showcasing his enduring talent and resilience. In 2024, Snipes reprised his role as Blade in the hit film Deadpool and Wolverine, alongside Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman, marking a major moment in his career. His return broke two Guinness World Records for the longest career as a live-action Marvel character and the longest gap between character appearances in Marvel films. This achievement reminded audiences of Snipes' unique contribution to the action genre and the cultural impact of his character. Beyond acting, Snipes has also ventured into writing, co-authoring the novel Talon of God, an urban fantasy adventure that reflects his diverse creative interests. His production company, Amen Ra Films, also highlights his behind-the-scenes involvement in the film industry. Wesley Snipes' story is one of highs and lows. He has faced personal and professional challenges, but continues to evolve and inspire. His journey from the streets of the Bronx to Hollywood, combined with his ability to bounce back after adversity, speaks to his resilience and versatility. Though his past controversies stirred public opinion, Snipes remains an influential figure, a pioneer for black actors in action films, and a testament to overcoming the odds. Each of the stars we've discussed, Sherry Coben, Ron Howard, Lillian Schwartz, Alex Salmond, and Wesley Snipes, has left a lasting impact in their fields, shaping entertainment, politics, and art. Their contributions will continue to inspire for generations to come. We invite you to share your thoughts, who left the biggest impression on you. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more stories celebrating these remarkable lives.